We have seen the stress strain relationship in terms of the matrix. Now we are going to introduce the thermal effect in such a deforming body. So the basic thing we will do first, imagine there is a length L at temperature T1 for some material. After increasing the temperature to T2, that means T2 is more than T1, the change in length is given by delta L equal to L1 minus L. So, this is the length L1 minus L. Now the thermal expansion coefficient alpha L is defined in this way, change in length dL divided by L, the original length and also divided by the change in temperature. In other words, change in length per unit original length and per unit change in temperature. So this can be grouped in a different way. We can write dL divided by L within the bracket and 1 by dt over there. Now we write dt as delta t, it is the same thing delta t inverse. So alpha L multiplied by delta t remains dL divided by L. Now dL divided by L is the change in length per unit original length and we have already defined this thing as extension or as an elongation when we were defining a range of strain parameters. Here this dl is happening due to exclusively due to temperature change. So this strain epsilon can be called epsilon th, th means thermal. So epsilon thermal is equal to dl divided by l. So if I put this dl by l equal to epsilon thermal over here, it becomes epsilon thermal is equal to alpha l multiplied by the change in temperature delta t. Now for a material, for certain material, alpha t can be a constant. In that case, the thermal strain in a linear direction is proportional to the change in temperature that has happened on a body. Now in the way we have defined this alpha l for a linear direction, we can also define alpha a, a thermal coefficient of expansion when area is considered as 1 by a multiplied by dA divided by dt. And similarly, we can define alpha v is equal to 1 divided by v multiplied by dv dt. dv divided by v that means dv or delta v divided by v is equal to alpha v multiplied by dt. dt we can write as the change in temperature delta t alpha v multiplied by delta t. Now consider a cube of side L. Each of these sides have length L unit and now we are heating it. If we heat each of the sides will expand, assume that they expand to the equal amount. So we can say that the changed volume, the volume is going to increase. Once the volume is increasing, we mean that the density is decreasing because the material has a constant mass. L plus delta L each of the changed length and it has to be cubed which can be expanded in this way. Now for the solids and rocks also which we will be dealing this delta L is a very small number. Since it is a very small number, so square of it and the cube of it are also very very small. So we can write V plus delta V is equal to what remains here is now here this L cube is again equal to V. So we can write V plus delta V is equal to V plus 3L square delta L. This V will cancel out. So what we get is delta V is equal to 3L multiple, this is L square, 3L square and then delta L. So I hope I am able to remind you what was done in the school days. From here, take a few steps and find out a relationship between alpha L and alpha V and also find out a relationship between alpha L and alpha A. 
the thing that has been done here will lead finally to a relation between them and instead of a cube if we deal with an area then we will be able to find out a relationship between alpha L and alpha A. We will now go into the matrix and see in a body which is under stress if heating is applied how the stress strain relationship is going to alter. Now let us see how a body under stress is going to give strain if it is heated up how the stress strain relationship is going to alter. So this is already discussed by me in the previous class this much of the matrix. Epsilon x is basically epsilon xx, epsilon y is epsilon yy, epsilon z means epsilon zz. These are the normal strain and when they are different then it is the shear strain. E is the Young's modulus, nu is the Poisson's ratio and here sigma x, sigma y, sigma z are basically sigma xx, sigma yy, sigma zz. They are the normal stresses and tau xy, tau yz and tau zx are the shear stresses. Now if there is a change in temperature by delta T amount and consider that along a single direction the thermal expansion coefficient is alpha T then along with this matrix one more thing comes that is minus alpha T multiplied by delta T change in temperature and then 1 1 1 0 0 0 matrix. Now we have to understand what it means. This means that if we multiply this matrix with that the first element will be sigma x minus, sig minus nu sigma y minus nu sigma z and then these terms will vanish and then minus alpha t delta t and this component will come. So it indicates that when a body under stress and subject to change in temperature then the normal strain epsilon ii is only affected by the change in temperature. What is not affected is the shear strains epsilon ij when i not equal to j are not affected by delta t or the change in temperature. To know what happens when i not equal to j you can try to see what is 2 epsilon yz and expand and see what is the term coming out you will find that those terms are becoming 0. So what is the meaning of this negative symbol? This negative symbol means that the thermal effect is counteracting with these stresses. For example, if a body is under extension and if the body is heated then it will be a plus symbol because the heating effect is expanding the body and the extensional stresses are also extending the body. So that will be positive in that case. Imagine a situation when the body is under compression at the same time it is heated up. In that case what will happen? The thermal effect will start counteracting with the stress related strain effect. So therefore in that case a negative symbol can be there. Ideally this can be bigger than that or this can be bigger than that. Now this entire matrix this is equal to this equal to that etc can be represented as a single equation epsilon ij equal to 1 plus nu divided by e multiplied by sigma ij minus nu divided by e sigma kk delta ij minus alpha t delta t multiplied by the delta ij. Here the delta ij indicates the Kronecker delta. So if I put i equal to j then I get let us say epsilon i i and I put i equal to j equal to x. So epsilon xx or epsilon x will be equal to you can expand and you can put the terms and you will get back to the desired matrix in all the cases. Note that if i not equal to j what happens? This entire term becomes 0 because this term becomes 0 and here what happens? Delta ij i not equal to j this term also becomes 0. So in that case for i not equal to j such as the 2 epsilon yz this situation yz situation 
we will be able to get back to the same matrix form. I will request the student to put i equal to j equal to x, i equal to j equal to y, i equal to j equal to k and then get back to these equations and then put i equal to x, j equal to y, i equal to j, i equal to y, j equal to z etc. and go back to the norm, the shear strain and the shear stress case also. It will go back there. If there is no thermal effect what happens? This entire thing vanishes. So, this is the contribution of the thermal effect. So, here we say that we have increased the temperature delta T is a positive number, delta T can also be negative. This is a case of heating and it is also possible to have that means delta T less than 0 is a case of cooling. So, that also can be in, uh, considered in this equation. For example, one has to look at this cooling effect is going against the normal strain directions or shear strain direction or is it going opposite. Imagine here is a body a cube and which is being cooled. So, it is shrinking in all possible directions and then you are applying extensional stresses. In that case cooling and extensional stresses are contradicting each other in terms of its deformation. But imagine there is a cooling cube and you are applying compression in that case this minus sign has to become a plus sign. We have seen just now the strain as a function of stress and how the temperature effect if as added up how that strain is altered. This is what we have seen just now. Now we can write also this relation strain as a function of a stress as stress as a function of strain and we have already seen it the compliance matrix and its inverse the stiffness matrix and its inverse. So, once that is being done sigma x sigma y sigma z tau y z tau x z tau x y is equal to E divided by 1 plus nu E is Young's modulus nu is the Poisson's ratio multiplied by 1 minus 2 v and then this matrix which is same as what I wrote earlier. So, I did not write multiplied by then the matrix epsilon x epsilon y epsilon z 2 epsilon yz, 2 epsilon xz and 2 epsilon xy. Note that earlier I might have written not the tau yz here, but the change is such that you see tau yz here correspondingly I have written epsilon yz there. Here is tau xz and correspondingly here I have written tau epsilon xz, here I have written tau xy and correspondingly I have written here epsilon xy. So, that is a change. So, that may also lead to a change in the matrix. So, your exercise is that so that you get involved not just watching but putting hands in it write down this matrix. I have already given earlier a case where tau yz was not here. I think tau xy was here xy yz and zx and this has been changed. So, in this situation once the thermal effect comes here it will be plus E multiplied by alpha T multiplied by delta T divided by 1 minus 2 nu and this is the matrix 1 1 1 and 0 0 0. So, that is the thermal effect. The meaning of plus symbol or the minus symbol I have explained just now. So, that works here whether the thermal effect is leading to a stress that is in same direction as that of the external stress applied then they are added up. If they are counteracting then one of them will be minus. Now, this relationship this big relationship can be also stated in this way where we will involve the Kronecker delta once again sigma ij these terms is equal to E divided by 1 plus nu multiplied by epsilon ij this is the epsilon ij terms plus nu divided by 1 minus 2 nu epsilon kk multiplied by the Kronecker delta plus E alpha t and then delta t of this term basically this term comes over here and then here we write. So, now I would request I think I have explained already in few of the lectures that 
how we put i equal to j same or different and go back to the matrix i will ask the students to put say i equal to j equal to x and then go back to this equation sigma x equal to what and let's take a case i not equal to j such as i equal to x and j equal to y that means you will get tau x y term expanded form and what i told regarding the stress strain relationship and the thermal effect will work here the same here we are dealing with an isotropic material and the thermal effect only alters the normal strain the shear strain does not get altered when there is a thermal effect involved for the isotropic bodies now there are two special cases and the detail you yourself can make the plane strain case when we put sigma zz equal to sigma zz equal to tau yz equal to tau zx equal to 0 the epsilon x is equal to epsilon xx is equal to epsilon yz and epsilon zx is also 0 once these such terms are introduced in the expanded form you yourself can reach the plane stress and the plane strain conditions the thermal effect but i would request the students basically to recollect this if at all recollection is required and these are not to be recollected separately because they can always be worked out we have seen the isotropic materials behavior when stressed and also thermally affected now we are going to see the anisotropic material and what major change happens in the constitutive equation we can write the relationship as sigma bold so which is a matrix sigma 1 1 2 2 sigma 3 3 sigma 2 3 sigma 1 3 and sigma 1 2 is equal to c c is again a matrix which is 6 into 6 matrix with 36 element and we can write c 1 1 c 1 1 2 up to c 16 and here c 2 1 c 2 3 up to c 61 and it goes c 61 c 62 up to c 66 66 does not mean that there are 66 elements because here 11 to 16 c 21 c 21 to c 26 etc goes on so basically there are 36 elements epsilon is the strain and it can be represented in the matrix way format epsilon 1 1 epsilon 2 2 epsilon 3 3 the normal strain and then the three shear strains the alpha t in case of an anisotropic material also varies in different direction along 1 1 1 2 2 1 2 3 in all those directions they have different values and that is the meaning of the anisotropic material so what is the main difference between isotropic and the anisotropic material in terms of purely thermal behavior isotropic material which is heated up the alpha t value in all directions is the same so this is not the case here and therefore alpha t will be represented in the matrix format alpha t 1 1 alpha t 2 2 alpha t 3 3 alpha t 2 3 alpha t 1 3 and alpha t 1 2 these three are basically related to the normal stress and the normal strain as you see i equal to j the subscripts and the these three will be basically code the table straight forward with the epsilon 2 3 epsilon 1 3 and epsilon 1 2 or here the sigma 2 3 sigma 1 3 and sigma 1 2 now so in the matrix format this is the form where we write stress as a function of this strain and also the change in temperature now if we do an inverse of this matrix if i bring c in this side or in other words we write epsilon is equal to s multiplied by sigma both of them are matrices minus alpha t that is also a matrix delta t is not a matrix then as i said s is equal to c inverse this is the inverse of the matrix so c11 c12 those numbers are going to change as let's say s11 to s16 and then s61 to s66 again naturally this will be a 16 to 6 matrix with 36 elements so this is the form and it has been understood that there are only 21 independent components over here and rest of them rest means 36 minus 21 so many elements within this matrix the sij values 
they are dependent on the rest of the SIJs. So the same thing holds true here also. Here only there are 21 independent elements and 36 minus 21 number of CIJ values are dependent on the rest of the CIJ values. Not all this CIJ and not all this SIJ has been possible to deduce in the laboratory experiment. So some of them has been deduced and when we once we write such an as an expression, it is a mathematical form and partly they have been constrained in the laboratory. So now two more things are to be discussed here. Here I said that delta T is a number, the change in temperature and in this way of writing means that the change in temperature has been uniform on the body which is deforming in all the directions. Suppose it is non-uniform. Suppose this delta T can also be written and in different directions having different magnitudes. So in that case delta T I am writing as bold and I am going to write basically as matrix. I can write as T11, T12, T13, T21, T22, T23, T31, T32, T33. So we can think the change in temperature if at all required in any natural examples, if at all required in any geological examples that this is also a 3 into 3 matrix. In that case my question to the viewer is that sigma of this form is equal to c of that form is equal multiplied by epsilon of this form alpha t which is again a matrix and I am taking delta t this time also as another matrix. Will it fit here? Will the equation be valid or is there any misfit? Now to my understanding delta t has not been divided or is has not been thought in terms of so many components in any of the geological examples. But we need to cross check whether such a concept can be brought into this equation and also into this equation. Now the second interesting thing in case of anisotropic body which we are discussing the normal stress any one of them I can take let us say this one sigma 2 2 is a function of the normal strains and also the shear strains and the thermal expansion coefficient all of them will be involved in explaining the sigma 2 2. And also the same thing for the shear stress any one three of them are shear stresses I take any one of them say sigma 1 3. This is a function of all these normal and the shear strains and also the normal components of alpha t and also as if the shear components of alpha t in those directions basically. And conversely we can say that any of the normal strains any of them so I can take this one is a function of all these stress components both normal and the shear stress and also all these alpha t components and also similarly we can say epsilon 1 3 which is a shear strain I can take this one or that one also but I am taking this one just to explain is a function of all these stress components both normal stress and the shear stress and also all the components of the alpha t. We have seen the stress strain relationship for the isotropic and anisotropic material when there was a thermal effect and we got equations and big matrices. Now here will be a simplification coming up consider an, a transversely isotropic material also called orthotropic material. In that case in such anisotropic material the alpha t becomes much more simplified. It is alpha t 1 0 0, 0 alpha t 2 0 and 0 0 alpha t 3. So which means that the alpha t i j terms for i not equal to j such as these terms all become 0 and alpha t i j terms when i equal to j such as t 1 1 or t 1, t 2 2 or t 2, t 3 3 or t 3 they are the non-zero values and that is what I wrote over here. Now for what kind of rocks this relationship can be true the answer is for the layered rocks and also for the fractured rocks. A rock can be fractured variably, there can be parallel sets developed. In this case we are talking a single set of fracture which are parallel to each other and which is within a rock. If there are cross cutting fractures this relationship does not hold true for the rocks. Now 
in this connection I am going back to the theory of the second rank tensors and then I, again I will come back here. A stress matrix T can be decomposed into a stress free matrix and an isotrop matrix. Isotrop not isotropic isotrop matrix and word I am avoiding it is not an isotrop it is isotrop matrix and a trace free matrix let us try to understand. So, we are going to decompose the T tensor into T dash and T double dash since the decomposition will be done. So, three of them will be the coaxial tensors. Let us say the T tensor is given by ABC, DEF, GHI by the nine elements within a matrix second rank tensor then I can write I identify the traces first A, E, I. I write a matrix with only the trace only one diagonal put all other terms as 0 and in the next matrix I keep this 0, 0 and that 0, 0, 0, 0 and fill up the rest of the terms B, C, D, F and then G, H. So, in this way and as per this definition this trace free matrix is this one there is no trace over here sum is 0 for a trace free matrix the trace is equal to 0 and there is an isotrop. So, this is called the this matrix or this tensor can be called as an isotrop. Now, this has also been called in some book as the hydrostatic stress tensor if we are dealing with stress. But note that I will better call it hydrostatic st uh, stress tensor only if A equal to I E equal to I if these three components are the same because if you dip something in a fluid from three perpendicular directions equal amount of stress works. So, from book to book some definition variation might be seen. Okay. So, now with this idea if I try to decompose alpha T into two components as alpha T is equal to alpha T i plus alpha T some other term z. So, one of them will involve only the trace and that is what is there this is itself the same. So, I can write alpha T here itself and then there will be another matrix which is free of this stress. So, which will be all the 0 terms. So, in terms of matrix symbol alpha T bold equal to alpha T plus 0 and uh, this is the decomposition that has been done in this way t equal to t dash plus t double dash. So, here this is called the isotrope. So, in other words for the orthotropic material alpha t matrix is itself the isotrope and the stress divider given by this relationship that means no trace and all other terms is itself the 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 matrix.